Welcome to episode 172 of the Necronomic.com. If you're looking to start your own podcast, you should check out Libsyn.com and get up to two months of free podcasting service when you use our code NECRO, all caps, N-E-C-R-O. Libsyn provides you with great customer service and support. They have real-time podcast analytics, free podcast guides and tutorials, and everything else you'll need to get started podcasting today. Go to libsyn.com and enter the promo code NECRO today. And check out the Necronama.com wherever you listen to podcasts. I am James Sabata, horror author, screenwriter, co-host of the podcast you're listening to right now. Many of you don't know this, but I actually met Don in a bathroom on the side of the road at a rest area once. And I am Don Guillory, author, historian, educator, co-host of the podcast. And James, I'm going to say the same thing to you now that I said to you then. You may not gaze upon me. <laughs> well played, sir. All right. Uh, joining us against his better judgment for the, I don't know, 500th time or something. I don't keep track. Brian Haas is back. Brian, welcome back to the show, man. Hey, welcome, thanks. welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me back, guys. I uh, certainly appreciate it. Well, there's going to be no jacket like on SNL, so you, you don't oh, get like yeah. banners and cool stuff. No, We're glad we you're here. <laughs> Yeah, okay. We should well, do that. Is... We could do like a thrift store cardigan or something. Yeah. Let's start well, by giving giving Thomas like forty of them. I used to love <laughs> I used to love going to like um, Goodwills or you know any of those types of places and finding like the second place karate trophy or whatever, and then yes. I would just put a piece of tape over it and just write whatever I wanted, and I was just like, <laughs> oh yeah, you're the best guest we ever had on our podcast. So um, yeah. Don't it's start just, that. Will Johnson will come for you because he is the self-declared greatest guest that we've ever had. So. Yeah, I don't I don't need to declare anything, you know, I, mean, <laughs> I think quality speaks for itself. So well, it's a good thing we're not voting on it. It would have to be somebody who sends uh, James an email or two. Oh, or good. <laughs> so that'll never happen. Yeah, there you go. And now a list of all the feedback we got this week. All right. There you go. Um <laughs> So, Brian, why don't you uh, tell our listeners about your podcast and your many other things you got going on? I don't oh, know. yeah, I, I guess I do things. Yeah. Um, so I'm the uh, co-host of the BS Movies podcast. I also have a football podcast called uh, The No Huddle Offensive. Um, and uh, I finally figured out the NFL season this year. Um, just take the underdogs and the points uh, because everybody sucks. Um, yep. It's just like the, <laughs> yeah, it's like the long and the short of the NFL this year. Um, I am also a film critic for, oh man, wait, I, I don't even want to say how long. It, um, it's I, I, the last it's been millennium. a couple of weeks now. Yeah. 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 Um, I uh, <laughs> remember uh, being assigned to uh, some, some things in the nineties. Um, yeah. Almost uh, 30 years now as a film critic. Um, more recently, uh, I branched out to, uh, live events and, um, film programming. Um, yeah, I, uh, gone all sorts of crazy places that I would have never expected from just a podcast. So I guess that's the, uh, that's the thing. Uh, everybody make a podcast. I guess everybody has made a podcast, uh, make a good podcast. Let's everybody go make a good <laughs> podcast. Damn it. You're adding work to my day. Oh, no, uh, I don't know if people know this. I don't know if people know this, but uh, you are one of the main reasons this podcast exists, because when I was considering it, I came to you for advice and uh, you were very welcoming. Like we didn't even really know each other that well at that point. And oh, yeah, that's uh, true. you've become one of my close friends now. But yeah. yeah, man, I appreciate it so much. And I just wanted to publicly say thank you. Oh, yeah. So thanks. I appreciate that. James, this isn't what you've been saying in private, though, man. What's going on? Oh, yeah. No, in private. I'm like, that guy's <laughs> fine. Oh, oh, sorry. I forgot we we're were still recording. recording. We're still recording. Anything we say nice about anyone in this episode, we talk shit behind their back. No, <laughs> it's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, this is normally where we do the 
why'd you pick this? But I kind of forced it on you and begged you. And I was like, hey, I really, really, really want to cover this. And you loved it too. You know, a lot of the people involved and stuff yeah. like that. Um, what, what, like if you were going to tell somebody, hey, you got to watch this movie. What, what, would your, what would your reasoning be? Um, well, so one of the things that I love about horror movies, somebody was actually posing that question to me recently. Why do you love horror movies? And, um, I consistently see things in horror movies that I just do not see anywhere else. I don't know that I can see them anywhere else. Um, and like this movie, I didn't know I needed this movie in my life until like I watched it and I was like, of course I needed a fucking (laughs) Cthulhu um, like glory hole movie in my life. What, where's this been? What? what, who, <laughs> what I can't believe nobody greenlit this before. Um, and so, um, I appreciate that there are people out there that are equally as weird and out there as me and, um, take that stuff like seriously. Um, I think a lot of people take that stuff seriously these days. Um, and it feels kind of nice cause that was not always the case. Well, that actually leads nicely into something I want to say about the runtime on this, which I'll get to in a second. But what you Mm. were just saying about how you see things that you don't see elsewhere. I'm getting that so much in horror books right now and anthologies Mm -hmm. and novellas, especially, which is definitely leading to what I'm about to say. But like, we're just in this great place now where it's like all these authors finally got everyone else to go. You know what? Give me the weirdest shit you got. Mm-hmm. And it's been so wonderful and so cathartic and you're getting great stories and we're getting stories from multiple levels of representation. Uh, I mean, everything's so great. And I would honestly say that a lot of the best horror I've ever read has come out in the last few years. And, and that's not to shit on the Stephen Kings and the Kuntzes mm-hmm. and whatever else. They're they're classics for a fucking reason. But mm-hmm. I love where we are right now, and I'm so fucking glad to be alive for it. It's fantastic, and I love that it's hitting streaming and movies and everything else as well. And, man, I'm just looking forward to where the hell this is all going, you know? Oh, yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Um, no, I, I feel the exact same way. Um, the the democratization of um, filmmaking, you know, largely because of like the digital revolution has allowed very diverse voices to tell stories. Um, And um, one of the, like, I think my favorite line to say on my podcast is I'm so tired of old white men telling me stories, right? I've heard those fucking stories. They're fucking boring, you know, like, unless you like put a new spin on it, like just don't even bother. Right. Um, and so like, I love the fact that, uh, women are getting a real opportunity. I, uh, had the opportunity to talk to, uh, quite a few women directors on, uh, my podcast. Um, and I think that's great. Um, I think, um, that the, the BIPOC, um, like, um, representation has been significantly better. Um, I just talked to somebody, um, like literally this last week, um, you know, um, an Asian Canadian director. Um, and I don't know if they do that stuff in Canada. They're probably just like a Canadian director, you know, cause they don't give a shit about that as much. Um, but, um, I've just been like really, you know, since things don't cost as much anymore. Um, and, um, you can easily make this like look at the way they turn out the Star Wars stuff, right? You know, um, or the Marvel stuff, um, where they're they're doing that largely in like you know large sound stages with like green screens and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. because it makes it so cheap, they can give opportunities to people that really fucking deserve them, you know. And um, so I love the fact that women are getting a much bigger like you know it was only a few years ago that. Um, Becca got her first movie and now this is her third or fourth movie. I don't even know. Uh, third movie, I think fourth, fourth one c- upcoming or whatever. Um, the, the elevator movie, right? <laughs> we'll yeah, come back and yeah. talk about that one. Elevated um, horror. 
Elevated horror. Yes, exactly. I can't wait to, yeah, I hope she comes to, um, <laughs> I, I don't know what it's called. That's just yeah. what I call it, but I know. Yeah, though. No, I just want to, I want her to come to, um, fan fusion this year so that we can make that joke like just over and over again. I think that would be I want to do a whole panel on elevated horror where we only talk about horror movies that take places in elevators. There are actually quite a few and I could absolutely be yeah. on that panel. Yeah. I would love that. Um, but so Don, like, mm-hmm. I don't know what you've been reading. Are you, I, I know you're getting your PhD. Maybe you're reading fucking nothing else, you know, but, um, are you, are you seeing a huge change as well? Or was I just like reading really shitty shit before? No, 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 no. You, You're right. Because <laughs> from people I've talked to outside of you, um, that is what people are, are favoring. Uh, and even with, with the time that I have, and, I, and maybe that's what it comes down to is time. Um, cause I don't have enough time right now to invest in, you know, 300, 350 page yeah. horror. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you give me a short story, you give me an anthology, you give me, um, something that's digestible in, in roughly, let's just say an hour. Like I'm just going to take a break 30 minutes to an hour. I just need to get out of this world that I'm in right now and see some, some cool shit, see something interesting. Um, and, and I think that's, that's. That's what's helped facilitate it. Plus, I've we all have those videos. I think a few years ago it was uh, the the YouTube videos. The problem was like I'm tired of seeing the ads. I don't want to see the ads. Like now I can. And you know, I think recently they added like extra function where you can skip certain ads uh, Mm -hmm. and even you know change your algorithm to where those ads will never appear. So they pretty much are going to force their ads out of the way. And that's just waiting 10 seconds for something that you want to spend the next 30, 40 <laughs> minutes on. Yes. Now, right? imagine you're going to sit down and it's, I'm reading this book <clears throat> and you haven't sucked me in yet. I'm not going to invest 300 pages in something like that. If it's a short story, it's 10 pages, maybe a thousand words, maybe 1500 words. You look at it and if you if if it didn't whet your appetite for more stuff or if it just didn't satisfy you, you look at it as like shit, I just read for 20 minutes. <laughs> you know, the right. the story, I didn't I didn't like it, it didn't work for me. Um and you just kind of go from there. Cause I, I think the last thing that I read that was a long or longer horror as far as a full length novel, uh, might have been The Last American Vampire. Um but for some other other works that, that they're out there, um, I don't know. It takes a lot to 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 do something to where I'm sorry. It takes a lot to get you interested in order to spend that much much uh, much time uh, on some type of material like that, as opposed to short form. Even with this uh, with a movie itself, the three hour movies, the two hour. Two and a half movie hour movies are not going to work as much as they used to, um, because we like—I don't know—we like our horror short. Because I, I don't have a problem with the pacing. I don't have a problem with the plot. Um, I think if you get into a movie that's an hour and a half, two hours long, just like if you have a, a longer novel, you're going to run into those pacing issues, and you don't need to to stretch some things out that much. And I think that happens a lot, especially in writing, where people try to get to a certain word count because they're so obsessed with, oh, 50,000 is a novel and this is mm. this and that kind of stuff. And you get so much padding that it, it – and this happens in movies too, horror oh, movies yeah. especially, where especially. the tension just drops off because they have to add this 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. And like we had Host. Host was fucking phenomenal and oh, what was brilliant. it, like 40, 45 yeah, it was 47, minutes, 48 minutes? minutes, minutes, something like that. Yeah, fucking fantastic. Um, go back and check out our host episode. But then the opposite end of that, Brian, I think you're the only one here who's seen it, but Terrifier 2 just hit. Mm-hmm. It's like two hours and 20 minutes, I think. Yeah. And I was especially surprised because it was you. You said the runtime actually worked. I mean, I, I know you you want to cut 10 minutes out of anything, but, <laughs> but um, can you just speak to that really fast of that difference and what you think made this work, even though it's longer than what we're used to when I'm basically fighting that you can only sustain tension for so long? 
Yeah, so the reason that that works, and I, I could still cut 20 minutes out of that movie, by the way. So if you want me to cut 20 minutes out of that movie, <laughs> Damien Leone, please give me a call because I can make it. I can make that fucker zip, man. You just, know, just um, don't don't cut our friend's cameo because it means too much to her. No, ah. I would not. I would not do that. But um, but <clears throat> here's what I'll say because like um, I uh, I enjoyed Terrifier the original for what it was, right? Um, a a gory, you know, eighties throwback, you know, that was just like a lot of set piece kills that, um, a director who has a background in, um, special effects could only like do basically like he Mm -hmm. basically did like all of his own stuff himself. That's why it all looks so good. Um, and so, and he's really talented at it. He's very, Oh, he's, he's one of the best I've ever seen. And so, that was fine. You know, like I, the story was not really there, you know, it was just sort of like, how do we get art to kill all these different people? Right. You know, um, terrifier two, there's a real story there. Right. Um, and I didn't really have a lot of problems with the pacing of it. You know, they take a lot of time setting up the characters at the very beginning so that when the bodies start turning into chum at the end, there's real <laughs> investment in it, you know, like I, I will never maybe see a better like kill in a movie than the, the hacksaw kill in the original terrifier. Right. But, yeah. but, but do I care about like that character? You know, like right. okay. sure. I don't want her to die. You know, I don't want like somebody to get tortured or whatever, but like, you know, she was just some character that we saw in a pizza parlor, you know, and was like sort of teasing art a little bit. Like, I, I don't know why that makes me, like care about that, you know? And so yeah. like in this, there's definitely like a backstory that works. Honestly, they don't really expand on any of the, the art mythology or just sort of like very moderately, I would say. Okay. And that, that would be a lot of the stuff that I would sort of like probably put on the cutting room floor, um, <laughs> which would maybe put our friend's cameo on the floor as well. So, oh, um, you know, yeah, I can't, but Hey, look, I get it. You know, um, that was crowdfunded. That was, that thing is incredible. Like we're recording this, um, the first, after the first weekend of terrifier. And like, I don't know that an independent film has had this sort of impact on the box office. And, Oh man, since like my, my best, uh, my big fat Greek wedding, you know, like I, like okay. where it was just like, wow, like I did not expect that, you know, like I expected it to play sporadically. I actually reached out to him myself and I said, I don't know if you're going to do this theatrically or not, you know, but I saw the first one theatrically and it was fun. And I would love to do like a screening of this. If you're, if, if that's not on the table, cause like they'd signed a deal with, um, screen box, you know? And so yeah, like, that's yeah. largely just like streaming. And so, um, like they were just like, we got some things planned, you know? And I was just like, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, just you 850 know. theaters. No big <laughs> the, deal. The, what, what happened was like, a, it is a product of like the exact moment that we're in where we are so starved for um, any kind of new movie that has like sort of an epic feel to it that if you have something and you have a little bit of like push behind it, there's no reason like it feels very much like uh, the drive-ins used to feel like that's what it sort of feels like to me right now. Okay. And AMC I think is just sort of like getting on this bandwagon because they're just like, we should probably be out of business. Right. Like there's no reason that we like, we only exist because like somebody thought that a stock meme was funny, you know, and like, and now we're, <laughs> we're still around, you know? And so like, we have to like, um, you know, justify our existence. And so they've been like reaching out to like um, the Hindi community. So they're getting a lot of like the Bollywood stuff and like they're reaching out to some of the smaller, like independent horror people because they're like, they know, they know the horror crowd shows up, you know, like we might only show up for the first weekend, but like, we're going to fucking show up. And so, yeah, it's well, and just that's the most important time to show up. Exactly. And then, you know, something like this happens where like terrifier gets into the top 10 and all of a sudden other people are like, what the fuck is terrifier? You mm-hmm. know, like I need to find <laughs> out what this is like this beat fucking top gun this weekend. Are you shitting me? 
Um, and so like, yeah, I mean, it's just, and so I honestly, what I really honestly hope happens, um, you know, aside from the, um, the, the like the slew of the Hollywood ripoffs of like super gory, um, you know, like slasher movies that are coming after this, um, is that some of the small guys get the opportunities, you know, cause there's a lot of guys out there that are doing really good stuff, um, that are just, I would call them like the regional filmmakers, like that used to happen, um, in the drive-in days, you know? And so like a guy is like, Oh, I can sell Florida, you know, or like a guy's like, I can sell Texas, you know? And so like, they would make a movie to sell that, you know? And then sometimes it was a little bit better than what they thought. And like, it turns out they could sell it a couple other places too. And so, you know, now I don't think there's that so much that, you know, you can make sort of these niche movies now. I mean, we're talking about one today, you know, uh, we haven't yeah, even, absolutely. we're 15 minutes into this podcast. We haven't talked about <laughs> it yet, but like, we're talking we'll about there. a niche movie. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, I'm actually a little irked that this didn't play on a big screen. I would have loved to see this on a big screen. I think this would have played so good on a big screen. Um, and you know, maybe someday, um, it could be booked in like a, um, part of, uh, marathon or something like this this would mm-hmm. be like a good like third movie in a marathon where people are like losing a little bit of steam and you're like okay let's put glorious on let's fucking let's rally <laughs> this fucking let's rally these people back let's get them back on our side you know absolutely <laughs> man like and and that's something i'm seeing in books as well like we're starting to get starting to get better horror sections at Barnes and Noble and, you know, like there's a lot of indie shops popping up too. Like there's a, uh, a little horror bookstore in Toronto now, Mm -hmm. and there's uh, one opening in Louisville, Kentucky that's owned by our friend Jenny Kiefer. Mm -hmm. And that should be opening soon. And uh, like, especially the Barnes and Noble in Bowling Green uh, chance, the guy who, is behind it has been bringing in a lot of horror stuff. Like my friend Laurel Hightower just did a really successful signing there Mm. and he's just pushing it so much and trying to get authors to come in and do signings. But more importantly, it's working. Yeah. Like like there's, there's a lot of authors that go to do signings and get like three people at BNN that go, what's your book? You know? Right. Uh, They just randomly, this is like really working and I love it. And, and I really feel like part of that, and I could be totally wrong, I'm sure anybody out there who actually knows could correct me, but uh, streaming has to be a part of this. The pandemic fucking us all up, and oh, we yeah. sit at home and give things a chance that we wouldn't have. Mm-hmm. That, that has to be a part of it. Like, and, and so that's one good thing that came out of everything, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, just like the start, we, we're all starved for attention and um, attention. We're all starved for, yeah, <laughs> that too, that too. <laughs> but um, we're all starved for like entertainment. And, um, you know, I don't like the whole like looking at it in terms of like its content or whatever, you know, but hey, you yeah. know, there's there's certain people out there and horror. We seem to like do really well because like. We have Shutter, we have Arrow, we have um, like Night Flight, um, we have like these streaming services that um, focus in really, you know, narrowly on like sort of exploitation and horror and, you know, those sorts of movies. And um, so I think there's like, there's been enough, um, there's been enough of us nerds that know that there's like a market out there for it that we finally go, well, there's a market out there for it. And we've been able to like, you know, show that's actually the case. Exactly. I mean, that seems like a pretty good lead into this movie. So Mm -hmm. let's go. Oh, There's a market for this movie for sure. Absolutely. I don't know what it is, but there's a market. (laughs) I think there's several, but you know, Um, there's, there's probably a market for a slightly different version of this film as well. Yeah. And, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, so like we all know Rebecca McKendry who directed this, uh, her husband, Dave, who co-wrote it, uh, you know, so instantly I'm going to watch it either way. Right. right. Like, Cause I'm going to support my friends mm-hmm. and, and they were like, I saw like, you know, the poster, the poster's fucking gorgeous That's i don't beautiful. know who did this poster but please do all of my book covers going forward 
Um, and then like, and then I get the description of this movie, right? And like, literally, just just fucking Lovecraftian glory hole. What else do I need? That's enough. Two words. You've sold me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as glory hole, two words or three? I, I mean, you know, with the Lovecraftian, Lovecraftian glory hole. Is glory hole one word or two? I think glory <laughs> hole is one word. But... It comes up either way in my searches. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would say pull up Pornhub and put it in and see what it comes up as. Don, would you be probably my... have Pornhub open. Can you do that real fast? Well, I was going to say, <laughs> as as the historian that is here who focuses on race, ethnicity, gender, and sexuality, glory hole is one word. Oh, hola- that's amazing. I love it. All right. Yeah. So two word description. I'm good to go. Like, yeah. I didn't need anything else. But then I saw this. And like you said, I I didn't know I needed this in my life, but holy shit. Like I was having a terrible week that week and Mm. and this was legitimately the best part of my week when I watched it in August or whatever day. Whenever it came out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and like, it just let me turn everything off and just love this fucking movie. And and then it went above and beyond. Like, we're going to talk about it, but like the fucking illustrations on the stall and, you know, all this <laughs> stuff was just, just fucking glorious. Like, absolutely <laughs> glorious. I had to say it, but it's true. Um, and, and I'm not just blowing smoke. We don't give a fuck if you're our friend. We'll, we'll tell you if something's terrible. Oh, yeah. You know, I, so. I'm straight up. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I won't mince words. I'll let you know, you know. Uh, but but literally, like, yeah, I, I needed this, and I love this fucking movie so much. So how do you guys feel about this movie? I'm going to let Brian go first, as you are the guest. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so same sort of thing. You know, it was just like, oh, hey, you know, movie by Becca. Got to definitely take a look at this and support my friend. Um, and, um, she has definitely matured as a filmmaker from movie to movie, um, where, you know, I think she was sort of like, there's a feeling out process still for all through the house. I think that was the name of that first movie. Um, the, uh, all the, the creatures anth- are stirring. All the creatures are stirring. Thank you. The anthology. Um, and then, um, psycho granny was just super fun. Oh, um, God, yes. yeah, I don't know if you've watched it or not. Yeah. But it's like, it's a blast. Um, I was like, if all lifetime movies are like this, maybe I need to subscribe to lifetime. Cause this is amazing. Um, and, but like, I wasn't really expecting like this sort of like step forward in terms of like the confidence in filmmaking and like the, uh, like the, the subtext of the story, right? Cause there is a lot of subtext and I love the way that they frame this movie. Um, you know, I, I feel like anytime you talk about like a Becca movie, it's like a, it's a team McKendry, uh, effort, you know, it feels like. Um, and so I don't know like what kind of weird fucking worm lives in Dave's head that can, <laughs> like make this. Um, and like, I don't know. I don't know if you ever met Dave. Um, he's a little abrupt in real life. I would say is the nice way of putting it. Um, I like, you know, Hey, they they sort of like counterbalance each other is what I sort of feel like. Um, so that's not like a slight on uh, Dave McKendry or anything like that. Um, I'm sure he's a very super nice guy. Um, but like, I, I just was so impressed with this And I think the real, like the smartest part of this movie was the, um, the framing of not giving you the whole story at the very beginning, right? Like slowly, Mm -hmm. um, you know, like an onion, you know, letting Mm -hmm. the layers sort of come out. And so you feel differently. I love a movie that can make me feel differently about a character that I've been watching for like 45 minutes, right? Where you're just like, Oh, I know who this character is. And then you're just like, Oh, I don't know who this character is. Um, and so, um, the way she deconstructs Ryan Quatin, Quatin, I don't know how to fucking say his name. Quantin, Quantin, Quantin. Okay. Yeah. Whatever it is. Just call him Jason Stackhouse. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, the way that she frames him and then the way that she deconstructs him throughout the, the entirety of the film 
is fucking brilliant. Um, and like, just, um, like showing the mediocrity of this guy uh, is like mm. m- maybe my favorite thing of the whole movie, right? Where he's like, <laughs> it's, it's like the very, uh, it's like almost the very end of the movie, I think, where he's just like, well, people will remember. And JK Simmons is like, no one will remember you. No one will remember me. And it's meant to be that way because you're a piece that. of shit and I'm a piece of shit. And people shouldn't be fucking influenced by pieces of shit like us, you know? And, um, I was just like, God, that is really like, you talk about cutting somebody's liver out. Like I just watched him cut his liver out and then it's like, and then I watched somebody metaphorically cut his liver out again. It was fucking amazing. I love that shit. Well, I mean, okay. Like, and sorry, Don, if you had something to say, I, I can't believe to add, I just wanted to, I just want to throw this out. It's it's the wording of what he says. It's the we will both be forgotten. And mm-hmm. I love that because that that basically has to happen with Gott because you know, if the rest of the world knew about him, that's going to fuck shit up, right? Oh yeah. But mm-hmm. but there is no reason for anyone to know what happened. Right. Like right. like there's no this wasn't televised. This wasn't something anyone else knew was happening except poor poor Gary who we'll get to in a while. Yeah, poor but Gary. But like uh you know, th- there is no reason that anyone would remember this once you're both gone. And god, I fucking loved that. But it also just hit really hard and yeah. Wow. Good ride. Yeah, I mean the, the yeah, just uh, cuz that's like the ending of the movie where they're just like, "Nope, fuck you." <laughs> like you're you're done and nobody's going to fucking remember this. That's great. I love that. Well, and that's cosmic horror in general. Like yeah. we don't matter. All right, Don, what do you got? Man. This show's racist today. Um so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> ah, we you didn't lose us. I mean, just just I'm not stupid over, enough to comment on talking that. over the one person here. You know, just saying Biden said things were going to be the same, but I didn't think they were going to be like this. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> we were two guys talking, and then the, then the property manager here came in. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so anyway, yes, I know, you <laughs> love how we made that link. I was like, come on, James, come on, hit this one out of the park. You, come you on, wanted something racist. There you go. All, All right, right yeah. go ahead. So. <laughs> What I have to say about this, I want you to stay with me. Mm -hmm. I hate the fact that the McKendrys made me think. That is not me saying I dislike the film, dislike anything (laughs) about it. What I'm saying is I hate that they made me think because they uh, made me think deeper than I, I had planned to. You know, as far as looking for for different things that might pop up and and, mm-hmm. and things I could associate with whatever, but the story I, I don't need to go on any further about the storytelling. You two nailed it. But the fact that they were able to flip the narrative on this character to the point where I immediately linked it to when all these people are like, oh. God, yeah, and of course you can hear more about my rant on the on a previous episode, but how all these people were freaking out and saying, "Oh my God, Jeffrey Dahmer was misunderstood." I feel sorry for him. I feel this. I feel that. Whereas, I mean, because of this this recent bio series, biopic right. series that had come out. Whereas Ryan Quanton's character, you start you feel sympathetic for him for the whole time until you realize who he actually is, and just <laughs> thinking about how the story how got is already has already seen that story knows what's going on has basically been playing with them the whole time mm-hmm. knows that and even when he asks he's like oh i just want to see her one last time and you're thinking it's this loving thing right like i want to see my girlfriend mm-hmm. she left me, she died we're not sure what happened to her um you know maybe she was pregnant with another man's baby whatever it was right but we get this we get this moment where at least for me I'm real I'm rationalizing this and saying he would be oh, I'm sorry cuz God has no gender. Yeah. God is looking at it from the perspective of I'm not going to see you as a symp- sympathetic character. I don't give a shit what your problems were. Like you did all this stuff that you did. Other people years from now if we were able to remember you are going to see this documentary about you the guy who cut his liver out at the rest stop somehow romanticize this 
and talk about how you had to give a piece of yourself after taking a piece of all these other women or whatever ridiculous narrative that would come up. So Mm -hmm. what I'm saying about the McKendrys is they did a great job as far as the, the, well, as the, to include the other co-writer as well, but the story, the writing and the capturing of the story on the film goes beyond what you would have had in the written word, but it also goes beyond what you would have had as far as the visuals to where the, there's this great combination as far as them working together to tell this story to where my emotional connection to, to Ryan Quanton's character is severed at that point because you do not see him as some, you know, some guy who stumbled uh, across a, a rep, a rest stop got drunk Decided he was going to, well, shouldn't say he decided he was going to sleep there. He ended up sleeping <laughs> yeah. there, set, setting his pants on fire. And so you're like, damn, I've been in that position. He's a liar, liar. Well, it's, we've been <laughs> in that position. I mean, I, I would say, mo- you know, most people, I don't want to speak for everybody. But I've never set all... my pants on fire. But no, yeah, no, no, so no, no, I, no. I, I just mean, I mean, just mean yes. as far as like, <laughs> yes. somebody broke I your heart. Yes. And then you're kind of like, nothing matters, right? Right. Yeah. Um, nothing matters as far as like I'm gonna I'm gonna get in my car. I'm gonna keep driving. Oh, I'm gonna stay at this place. Oh, you know nobody loves me, so I it doesn't matter if I drink myself to death. You know you have all those types of emotions that you that you may or may not experience, but there's that idea that you can't go on without that other person, mm-hmm. and you you get to the you get to become um, part of a downward spiral with respect to your health, with your 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 mentality your just your overall senses and i mean it it, they they did such a great job of showcasing that and in one making you feel like you could be in this person's socks i guess i was going to say in shoes but he's in socks in the back (laughs) but but to be in that person's socks to where you're hearing this strange voice there is no reason for you to believe anything that this this entity is saying, uh, but now that you're stuck in there, you are, you know, at, at their uh, behest of their will. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. fast with the socks. Cause I'm going to forget when he climbs up the, oh. the ventilation shaft, I was like, oh. take your fucking socks off, dude. You're going to fucking <laughs> fall. Like you could grip that. Slide right feet. out. Yeah. Um, well, I was just, uh, <laughs> my first thought is like after Gary, I'm like, Oh fuck, man! You can't walk around in that. You're gonna have Gary all over your feet, you know, for the rest of the goddamn. <laughs> well, and then the and then the fecal matter from the twelve other guys from uh, oh, for him. In the yeah, band. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you want oh me to God. name them in alphabetical or chronological would, order? Chronological, please. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know how much of a, a hand the McKendrys or, or may have had in in uh, casting, but. I only picture Gott being voiced by two people. One, J.K. Simmons, who they picked, or uh-huh. who was picked for the film, yeah. or Brian Cranston. Those are the only two people I could see. Oh, he would have been good too, yeah. Here is, and for J.K. Simmons, for me, there was there was an extra connection because I knew him from from Oz. Like, that was oh, where God, I... Yeah, I know, right? Oh, nice. Like, as, as Schellinger, or Schillinger, I knew him as this badass, like neo Nazi. Yeah, not, he's I'm not the worst. Yeah. Oh my God. You were so just, terrible on that show. <laughs> he was the just anything you could imagine somebody doing to yeah. another human being that you would never want done to you. He's doing this. And when when his voice first comes out, I'm like, fuck, this is not gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> And then there's me. I'm just over here waiting for him to yell, Parker. You know, uh, so. Well, he did uh, the entire Mr. time. Yeah. Or Shitbird. I I love um, <laughs> uh, Palm Springs. If you haven't seen it, oh, he's so good oh, yeah. in it too. Um, yeah, no. Um, I I just I I just can't get over the genius of the framing, right? You know, because I feel like. Um, it changes the dynamic of the whole story. Um, and this is the thing that I like to tell people a lot is like, don't necessarily think of the beginning of the movie as the beginning of the story. You know, mm-hmm. think of that as like where your movie begins. Right. You know, mm-hmm. um, and you know, um, a lot of people have done this. I mean, you know, people call 
Quentin Tarantino a genius for basically just stealing movies that nobody else knew about because they didn't spend their waking hours um, in a uh, video store watching, you know, uh, Truffaut movies and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, like I I get that you uh, could steal some stuff from some like uh, international um, Chinese action movies or something like that. and Nobody would know because like who would fucking know, you know, a bunch of like. Chinese people, I'm sure, but you know, other than that, <laughs> no. Um, and so I just love the fact that they decide to start the story sort of in the middle, right? You know, um, and like they don't fill in the gaps until later on. Um, and I, they do make him super sympathetic at the very beginning. I think that's a really important piece of it. So that, um, you feel really vile and dirty, like at the end of the movie where you're and then, you know, it also feels super justified, you know, what happens to him. You're just like, God, I wish it was worse even, you know? Um, but like, I, I think that's something that a lot of storytellers should try to understand better, you know, is that it doesn't, the beginning of your movie does not have to be the beginning of the story. And oftentimes if you frame it that way, you know, cause a lot of, I'm, we are sort of in the, you know, outside of the weird horror that like Don was talking about earlier, which there's some really good stuff out there, um, for that. Um, but like, you know, we're largely telling the same stories, you know, over, over and over and over again. Um, and so it's all about like perception and like framing, um, in terms of making that, memorable and i think they did a great job with that here absolutely um i will i will fully admit that the first time i watched it Mm. i was angry when i saw the switch i i wasn't like like i i hated it i just didn't feel it was necessary i was I was in the camp of this movie was going so well. Why do we need this weird fucking thing that's off to the side over here? And, Mm -hmm. and I still agree that it would have been fine. This was my third or fourth viewing Mm -hmm. and I have completely changed my mind on that. That was just a immediate reaction, right? Mm -hmm. Rewatching it and really like knowing that part and watching how it played out and, Man, I I just fucking love it. Like this time, especially, I was really thinking about how this reflects all these guys who think they can get away with fucking anything, right? Yeah. And and they think no one knows my secrets, but they're not even good at hiding them. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, like they don't even try to hide them. And then they're right. like, "How did people find out that I was cheating on my wife? I don't know. You kept checking in at the hotel, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> you you kept telling us, you know. Yeah, yeah. You you kept telling us sex stories about cheating on your wife, and then you didn't know how anybody found out. Yeah, but no, like uh, Wes's character just hits that note so hard. Like these fucking dudes that. DM women on Twitter constantly and then go, well, I can't believe you're outing me, you know, like, <laughs> like, dude, like you there's did no, it. <laughs> there's no level of protection at all. You're literally sending something that they can screenshot mm-hmm. and share with the world right. and then don't understand how you got caught. And I was like, Wes just exemplifies this whole mentality. Like whether like, one could argue he legitimately fell in love and stopped doing whatever he was doing and really cared about Brenda or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because your shitty behavior is still left behind. You yep. left evidence everywhere and then mm-hmm. wondered why the fuck you got caught. I don't know. So it just totally changed my perspective throughout my multiple watchings. And now I adore this, this view of Wes. Oh yeah. I think, I think it's great. Um, I mean, I just, like I said, I I love when you can change the framing of like a character that I've already like sort of been rooting for. Um, like, uh, another movie that did this really well was his house, um, that came out, I don't know, like two, three years ago, Mm -hmm. um, where you're just, you're watching this movie and you get super invested in the story. And then you just realize like, Oh shit. Like they haven't told us, exactly what's going on and when you find right. out what the, what exactly is going on you're like oh man that 
that changes everything that came before, you know? And so like you, you start like thinking of like all the stuff that you've already watched. Um, and so like, I it felt sort of the same way in this one where I was just like, Oh man, that's so brilliant to like change the framing of what this character is because like, and he really is sort of like, I just love the, um, sort of, you know, um, essay on, like just these mediocre dudes. I mean, I, I don't know how else to describe them, you know, um, like they seem to like love to like out themselves, you know, on the social medias and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, just like, what was me, you know, like, um, and like, I can feel no sympathy at all for somebody like this, where it's just like, Wow. What, what an awful piece of shit you are, you know, <laughs> even if you did, you know, like, even if he did legitimately like fall in love with that, you know, cause like, you know, I sort of felt the same way where I'm like, Oh man, maybe he is really like trying to change, but he doesn't, you know? And so like, it's like, well, how's this different than any of the other, you know, it's like, Oh, I, you know, I, um, have been a big fan recently, I don't know, the last five, six, seven years of like, you know, I, I don't care what the fuck you say, change behavior or get the fuck out, you right. know? And, yeah. uh, that's, that's what I feel like this movie is. It's like change behavior or get the fuck out. Oh, you're going to get the fuck out. Okay. I get it. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to ask, ask a, well, I was going to uh-huh. ask a, a strange question, but not mm-hmm. strange considering what we're talking about. Um, have I'm I ever gotten a blowjob from a no god? In a... <laughs> uh, why did don't you answer penis? for him? Oh, why are you why are you sorry. assuming? I thought that was a good touch, though. I, I mean, the the whole I- and I'll get to my question in a second. Yeah. The whole idea that you're going to be able to solve this problem with your penis. Oh yeah, <laughs> like and, and just you think about it because because of the shape, uh, you know, as far as where the hole is, where mm-hmm. how the painting is on the wall, and everything. That's immediately where your mind goes to. You're like, well, well it's it's obviously a, it's, a, it's a glory hole and, it's, and whatever, right? But I love how Gott's response is, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like, you're well, going to do anything with that? <laughs> yeah, and I just love how he got, he got offended at first. Yeah. <laughs> at the way, well, the, the response that he got. But then almost twice as offended as far as like, you mean my dick can't solve problems? Right. What? And and because that's, even at that part, I thought about so many stories, so many interactions I've had. um, I mean, stories told to me and interactions I've had with people who've made these statements, which is, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, whether it was dealing with somebody's sexuality, like, oh, all that woman needs is, you know, good D. Or, oh, you know, she just needs to, to get some and her attitude will go away. And that idea that toxic men typically have with respect to the use of their penis, like it is going to solve things. Um, Whatever the problems are, they can be solved through penetration. And I love how that immediately is kind of like, no, 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 you, you dirty birds. That's where you thought we were going. We're actually going to, we just want his liver and maybe some candy and some fava beans. (laughs) <laughs> but my question to the two of you was, yeah. I'm, I know we've all gone on road trips. Um, what has been your typical interaction at a rest stop? Or, <laughs> And I don't mean that as far a as the glory hole situation. Like, is there anything memorable where you're kind of like, I don't know, maybe you're scarred for life or, or something that, that you recall from, from those days where it was kind of like, I don't know, interesting, strange. Uh, yeah, so there, there is one, um, thing I was in Vegas when I was, I don't know, like 23, 24 or something like that. And, um, there was, it was the weekend that the AVN was in town. Right? Oh, you know? yeah. Okay. I did. I didn't know that. You know, I just like, Hey, we're go to Vegas, you know, and just like, <laughs> and so, um, this guy comes into the bathroom and um there's there's a bunch of us in there and um so he's just like he starts spewing all this like nasty like you know just like anti-gay rhetoric you know Mm -hmm. 
And there's this guy who's like, he's taller than me. You guys have seen me, you know, so I'm like six, three yeah. or whatever. Uh, so tall, thin dude wearing a cowboy hat, you know, and he's like the, uh, this guy that's yammering on, right. You know, this guy, and there's a guy like this, you know, just taking a piss, right. You know, he thinks he's, you know, talking to a friend or whatever. Um, and, uh, he, he says some very inflammatory things about gay men and, um, the guy goes, <laughs> the guy, in the cowboy hat turns around to him and he says, you know, there's two things that I like. Um, it's like, uh, fighting and sucking dick. And he punched the dude in the fucking face. And like, I mean, like he dropped on the goddamn <laughs> ground and I like ever, like everybody in the whole fucking bathroom is just like laughing their fucking ass off on this <laughs> oh stupid, God. you know, like, uh, homophobic asshole you know or whatever and uh it was i mean i don't know that that guy really likes to fight and suck dick but you know (laughs) he certainly gave that at the the same time yeah right i mean maybe who knows you know i I don't know how (laughs) things work in vegas you know um but yeah no that's so that's the weirdest like bathroom interaction i've had you know i can't rest stops it's just like i go in it's a you know, basically it looks like the bathroom in this yeah. movie, but I just pee in there and then nothing happens. That's, that's like all those stories basically. Yeah. I, I basically pee and then thank the world that I can pee without sitting down and then I mm. leave. Yeah. Um, yeah. I traveled all the time as a child because my parents had a business and we were in different states like almost every week. Um, And so I stopped in a lot of rest area bathrooms and I never had anything weird happen at all. Like, I don't even have a story as good as fighting and sucking cock. But, you know, um, (laughs) the only weird thing that I remember, there was this one time we stopped at like three different rest areas and every single time I saw the same woman. But I was like 11, right? So I didn't Mm -hmm. think, hey, she also has a car and is also (laughs) driving. (laughs) Like, I was like, oh, my God, where did this lady come from? Why is she always here? Like, And for like a year, whenever we would stop at a rest area, I'd be like, please don't be here. Please don't be here. (laughs) It's like a Stephen King story or something. (laughs) Right. The woman at the stall. (laughs) She needs you to flush the toilet so she can finally be happy. That's right. But it's clogged. No, yeah. it's. Why didn't you put the seat down? <laughs> Why didn't you put the seat down? You so dirty what about you, bastard. Don? What kind of weird stuff? What kind of weird stuff happens? Oh you know my gosh. Uh, well, I I was gonna <laughs> say. I, I mean, I can't top Brian's story. I, I was really just gonna talk. <laughs> oh my god. Plus, because like I'm banned st- from Vegas, so. I'm not banned from Vegas. I was gently escorted via wheelchair from one hotel casino to another one because it was obvious that I had enjoyed myself too much that evening. Mm. Anyway, um, (laughs) here's the thing. Mississippi at one point, because I used to make this when I lived in, in the Atlanta area to come visit with. My my father and, and his family in, in, in Mississippi growing up, or I should say in high school uh, and into college. And I would make that five, six hour trip or, or longer if I was driving straight from college. And I would stop off at the rest stops and it almost became routine. Like I knew where to go, like which ones weren't going to be ridiculous. Or you didn't have to worry about, you know, something bad was going to happen to you. Um, because when I was living in Mississippi back in the 80s and even visiting uh, visiting in the 90s, there was there were a lot of complaints about the the rest stops. It also involved in the, the fact that many of the rest stops did not have bathrooms. So you would have to go out into the woods to, you know, relieve yourself. But they eventually changed all that stuff. So when I saw this, I saw the movie and when Ryan Quanton's character stops, I'm just thinking like. Mm, I have some questions about <laughs> about the quality of this rest stop. And as soon as he went in, I was like, yeah, that's about normal for Mississippi. Because <laughs> I'm thinking, like, please don't let it be ridiculously clean. Um, I mean, the welcome centers are different, but the, the rest stops. Yeah. Are, but 
we have rest stops at this or in the state as well as roads, highways, counties that are are named after Klansmen. So every time I, I I'm driving on I-55, I'm either going north or south, I make sure to stop at this one rest stop so I can piss on on the you know the clan. Because you know, yeah. Me, you know, you, you you get me to stop at a certain individual's rest stop or rest stop that's named after this person, I see the symbolic nature of that. Um just like other famous individuals who are now public restrooms. Yeah. Right. I mean, like someday I really look forward on taking a shit on Mitch McConnell's grave. Right. I think, and I don't think I'm alone. And there'll be a line. Oh yeah. I know. I know. I'm going to have to get like a ticket, you know, it's like the, the, the meat counter, you know, <laughs> at like the grocery store or whatever now serving, 640 Jesus Christ 647 okay uh, sir did you line. have your coffee did you have your let's, coffee can let's you go keep this line moving okay there's a lot of people that need to shit on this grave today all right but I had 28 dollars worth of Taco Bell and I gotta get this line moving <laughs> oh something's gonna be moving in that line you best believe <laughs> with 28 dollars worth of Taco Bell <laughs> god damn right <laughs> hey speaking of which they're bringing the Enchirito back well, there you go. And along with that, massive diarrhea. Yeah. I, well, I mean, they brought back the, um, the Mexican pizza after people losing their fucking minds. So, um, which, I mean, is, I guess, a torta, really. I mean, it's what it sort of breaks down to. But, you know, it's the, the Americanized version of the torta, I guess. But, yeah. I don't know how this broke down into like a Taco Bell discussion on top of like what we were already talking about. But <laughs> we were talking about using restrooms. Oh, the ba- yeah, it's the bathroom. Yeah, there's there, there's the but, connection. Yes, thank you. Yeah, back to your political bathroom. I can't wait to take a dump on Trump. Dump oh, on Trump yeah. is gonna be an amazing attraction. So be amazing on Trump. Hashtag. Yeah, I know, right? Oh yeah, right? I mean, my God, it's amazing. That is that is really incredible. Um <laughs> to know that he'll be dead someday and we can all poop on his grave. <laughs> oh, it's like the little we'll be hiding that you... documents on a golf course. That's right. Yeah, so that's what we're calling it these days. Hiding documents on a golf course. Um oh, I do love the fact <laughs> that so the thing that I when I was a kid, I loved uh, HP Lovecraft mov- or movies, um, uh, stories. Um, you know, I was, uh, totally blissfully unaware of what like a shitty racist asshole he turned out to be like in real life. So, you know, you temper a lot of that, like, wow, this guy like made br- brilliant cosmic horror that like really made me feel like, um, small, you know, and like mm-hmm. in- insignificant, Um, and also like, oh, oh, he was a terrible person on top of that. Okay, great. So, you know, it's like one of those, like, you know, art, art versus the artist sort of arguments. Um, and so like, um, he's one that I really have, you know, cause like he really did influence a lot of what I really like. And, you know, I think that his stuff really made me like the weird stuff. Um, and you know, him and Poe and, you know, a couple other authors, Um, and so, um, you know, like finding out later, I mean, just sort of like colors that a little bit, but, um, I, I always appreciated people that took the sort of like cosmic horror seriously because I, I don't, for a long time, you know, I think everybody was just like, why would anybody make a, you know, like it took reanimator for anybody to even be like, oh yeah, I guess this could be a thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and then like it took maybe another like 15 or 20 years for them to, for anybody to take it seriously, you know? Um, and so like, I like now that like we get to that where it's just like, I like that, you know, I like mythology, you know, that's what I sort of feel like the Lovecraftian stuff thing stuff is, is just, you know, like it's a different mythology for like, um, weird gods instead of like Mm -hmm. the Roman gods or the Greek gods or whoever, Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I mean, I look at it as he's not alive, so he's not uh, profiting from it in any way. True. And uh, But the way that it brings people together and it lets them continue to build this mythology and also just open doors to create their own shit 
I, I, his influence is ridiculous. And mm. I mean, a lot of people were pretty fucking shitty back then and today. True. And, True. Uh, but I just want to say it gives me hope that one day my, my love for Harry Potter can come back because somebody won't profit from it anymore. Right. And, and maybe it will allow people to build their own worlds out of it. What I like now is that um, other people get to play in the sandbox, you know, so like, yeah, so it's like, I don't really care so much that, you know, it's uh, Lovecraftian because like it's Lovecraftian by somebody who isn't a piece of shit. One of the things I really like about the Marvel universe too, right? Like I I get that they're all sort of the same, you know, I get that, right? Um, Because they have a formula that works and why not just keep doing that formula as long as it works. But hey. Now we get like these diverse voices that are getting the opportunity to like tell some of these stories. And so like, I mean, did anybody think that like Taika Waititi was going to be like this enormous director, you know, after making a couple of like silly, you know, like New Zealand movies, you know, everybody really liked um, what we do in the shadows, but like, you know, it's, it's still niche, you know? Um, and so, um, but like suddenly, you know, you, you get somebody like that, you get somebody, um, that, uh, you know, like, um, oh, uh, God, I'm forgetting your name that did uh, nomad land, uh, Chloe Zhao, Zhao um, yeah. you know, um, who, you know, same sort of thing, you know, where it's just like, I love the fact that these, you know, like, and the actors, the same thing, you know, like Benedict Cumberbatch can go out and make something like, um, the Gene Campion movie um, for probably nothing, you know, because he also made um, Doc, Dr. Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, you know? And so like, um, uh, you know, it's, I, I, I think there's this like sort of like trade off. Um, I, I think that Ethan Hawke said it really well, you know, like you would think like he would be kind of the guy that would be like no to the Marvel stuff. And he was in the, the moon Knight series and he was a mm-hmm. super fun villain, you know? And he's, he's like, Hey dude, you know, I get it. You know, like this is just fun popcorn stuff, you know? And I could go make like my beyond series, you know, um, or, uh, whatever. Um, and, um, you know, make like these sort of arty things, but like people are going to go see these and, you know, it can help me do the stuff that I really want to do. Yeah, most definitely. There's a huge t- yeah. tangent there. No, <laughs> <Sorry>. it is. <laughs> I love it. You know, I I do like Gus's, I guess, skepticism about the world or just cynicism, I guess. Um, talking about this, this idea of kindness and generosity equals dominance. And the, the type of worldview you would have to have to, to, to genuinely think that, mm-hmm. right? Because we all know people who don't do anything for anybody else. I mean, as far as like, I'm sorry, they don't do anything for anybody else for the sake of getting the credit for it. You know, they're not the ones that donate to homeless and make sure that there's like a, you know, Facebook live or TikTok live stream that's going when they do it or, Mm. you know, trying to have their name attached to something. But there are definitely a lot of people that do it for that for that reason. And they'll make the argument of like, well, you know, I, I'm, I still gave the person twenty dollars, or I still I bought them some baby formula, or I did this, um, as opposed to understanding that the act itself is all that's that's necessary. You don't need to have credit. You don't need to do it for this idea of having somebody feel obligated to you for doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that was an interesting take for him to have. Did either of you see any connection? I mean, other than the story he gives about his dad. But any connections between what he's doing and then, I guess, the interaction between he and God? Well, that's interesting. I hadn't really, like, considered that very much. Um, I have not gone back and watched it again like um, James has. I uh, feel like it does deserve a um, a, uh, a rewatch. But mm-hmm. um, James is also just like, hey, we're going to do this. Let's go. Let's, let's do this. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, all right, let's do this. We called him five I, minutes beforehand. 
say about, I mean, it's not quite exactly what it was, <laughs> but you know, it was close. Um, and so, um, you know, I am more than happy to come in and be the, um, the mercenary, the free agent. I don't know what you would want to call me, you know, like the guy that you bring I in like to. Yeah. But, um, you know, you're just like, Oh man, well, we need somebody that can, you know, like legitimately talk about pretty much anything that we're talking about. What's Brian doing tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that sometimes. So one of these days, I'm kind of, I, we're definitely doing the stuff. One of these days we're doing the stuff <laughs> because man, oh, there's just so much to unpack in that movie. Um, but, um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm more than happy that, uh, you like reached out to me to do this. Cause like, I, I love this movie and, uh, I just love the seriousness that, I mean, they're just in like, you just, love it when like good people succeed. Right. You know, mm -hmm. like where you legitimately know, we all legitimately know the people that are behind this movie and they've, they're just like n genuine, nice people. Um, and it's like, they would have, if, if anybody would have a reason to have like an ego, it would be Becca McKendry. And like, she ruins all of that within five seconds of meeting her because she literally has, kind of no ego at all and so mm -hmm. because of that um she's just so down to earth and you're just like wow you know the first time i met her i'm like i can't believe i've been reading you for like i don't know 15 fucking years in fan fangoria or whatever now mm -hmm. and like now i'm talking to you and you're just like this regular person you know i was not expecting that i was expecting like a horror movie encyclopedia which she is but you know there's so much more to that you know absolutely Don, we don't need to talk about the first time you talked to her. That's fun. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I believe James was so scared to talk to her. And I was like, eh, let me go talk to this lady. <laughs> this, is, this is this is me, right? Like I have worked mm -hmm. at at Phoenix Fan Fusion. It was Comic-Con at the time, mm -hmm. but I've, I was in guest relations. Like I, I went out to a bar with Stan Lee. Like I fucking hung out with, I don't know how many fucking celebrities and I've never been phased. And then Rebecca McKendry was standing like 15 feet from me and I froze. And I literally went, went like full high school. I was like, Don, can you go talk to her for me? Like, it was <laughs> so lame and so hilarious. And it's just, it's the same thing you were saying. Like, this is somebody I've been reading forever that I hold mm -hmm. on this pedestal. And, and I had gotten to a point where I didn't think celebrities could face me. And I still don't think they can because Rebecca's not a celebrity. She's right. just Rebecca. But yeah, mm -hmm. holy shit. I, I, I loved, like, you know, we got to do panels with her and, and got to know them better. And man, just, just a fantastic human being. So yeah, you know, sad. like the good guys yeah. win, and I love it. Yeah, I'll tell my favorite story ever. You know, like my favorite famous pe people story. Um, I've met one or two famous people in my life. I don't know if you know this. Gone to not. casinos with them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, one, one, one or two. Uh, and so um, they always say, like, don't meet your heroes, right? You know, and so that's what sort of reminded me of this is like you sort of got um, uh, awestruck a little bit. So, um, I was, uh, let me think about this. I probably was like 25 or 26 or something like that. Um, still pretty young. And, um, my buddy who works at the radio station calls me up, uh, on my cell phone, my brand new cell phone. Ooh, wow. So it's like, I felt like a, such a player, you know, it's like, man, I got a cell phone. Ooh, this is really, you know, like two, uh, 1990 eight or 99 or something like that. Uh, he's like, yeah, go down to, you know, X, Y, Z corner and, uh, the promotions guys down there. He's got something for you. Okay, cool. So I go down, um, they give me tickets to see Joe Strummer and like the clash is my favorite band of all time. So, um, I go down and, uh, they got meet and greet passes. I'm like, Oh my God, I get to meet him too. Are you fucking kidding me? And, uh, so I go in and, um, like I've never had a meltdown. I've met some pretty famous people before, you know, and it's just like sort of like nonplussed about it. 
And uh, I went in and Joe is like this tiny, tiny guy. He's like five foot four, you know, so I'm like, I'm almost a foot taller than this guy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I walk in, I'm like, the first time that I heard London calling you change my whole fucking life. And you, you know, <laughs> had the total, you know, like, you know, fanboy meltdown right in front of him. And, you know, like, I have to give him all the credit in the world. Um, he was just like, wow, that's great. You know, he's like, cheers, mate. I love that, you know, my music made a difference in your life. He had a little, like, cooler, and he, like, pulls a Guinness out of the cooler, and he cracks it, and he hands it to him, and he's like, you know, cheers, mate, you know. Um, and he asked me, like, what my favorite Clash song was, and it's not, like, a famous Clash song. It's Bank Robber, you know, um, and so – I told him, I was like, you know, and he's like, Hey, you're in, you're in luck, mate. We're going to play it tonight. And I was like, Oh, yeah, it's very nice of you to say, you know, whatever. Um, and so, um, cut to, and two hours later or whatever it was when they're actually playing and Joe on stage goes, Hey, where's that kid who told me that bank robber was his favorite clash song. I told you we were going to play it tonight. And then they played it. And then I had my second fan meltdown of the fucking night. <laughs> um, and so um, that sort of remind your Becca McKendry story sort of reminded me because I just like I did not handle myself cool at all. And like <laughs> and he was just like he's probably like, yeah, I, I've had this once or twice probably. So but yeah, it reminded me of that story. Love it. Don, do you have one of those? Uh, I I mean, I, I would say probably the coolest interaction. It, it was kind of the same thing as far as. I guess Comic Con. I'm still sure trying to remember when the the changes started happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was Danny Glover of it was Danny Glover was one, and I'm not going to bring up the Michael Doran thing because I brought it up before, so I never got to have that moment. <laughs> but when it does, I'll probably freeze up like James did with uh, with 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 Becca. But no, it was it was Danny Glover. I was supposed to assist, I think Charlene Harris or or someone. Uh, mm-hmm. So I was waiting out in the in the loading docks, and you know one of the one of the black Lincolns or Explorers or whatever it was that had pulled up, and here comes this guy I hated as a child because he played Mister in in the color purple. So oh, I'm right, but yeah. he's also you know he's also Murtaugh. He's also Murtaugh. Yep. So I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh, I remember when I when I was a kid watching. This Watch this movie and thinking like I fucking hate this guy. I want him to die. <laughs> and like, and then he he gets out of the car. And so I'm looking at him from a distance, and I'm thinking about all these thoughts I had, you know, when I was a kid, like how I've loved everything the man has been in. Like no matter how bad the movie was, I've loved like how he was in it. Mm-hmm. And then he let the trap out. and saw. Uh, well, that wasn't bad. I just <laughs> that wasn't a bad movie. <laughs> I know. I, I love Saw. Like, but, what are you yeah. talking about? But he he gets out of the 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 SUV and he has that laugh. Yeah, the laugh that you hear on screen. Yeah, is his laugh. You know, it's not. Yeah. It's for this character. Or it's supposed to go. The, like he 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 let it out. I was like, son of a bitch. And he walked up. He walked up to me, and I think I had a bow tie on at the time. And he's like, oh, you look a really sharp, young man. And shook my <laughs> hand. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Danny Glover just shook my hand. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did not. I was not even close to doing that because I'm like, I know he fucking hears that all the I'm time. I'm sure he does, yeah. I know he's I too guess. old for that shit, definitely, yeah. to, to hear that. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's probably that, younger than we are now when he said that. He was, probably. actually. Yeah. He was. I, I, I looked it up. I did the math. Yeah, he was 41 in that movie. Oh, wow. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, or man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will say I agree. I'm too old for a lot of things now. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but just imagine 41 was like, um, it's time for me to retire, Riggs. <laughs> you know, it's just like, that's right. Yep. Got to get out of here. Before you know, was... we'll be making Lethal Weapon 6. Yeah, it's coming. So, <laughs> yeah, get ready. Um, he was really great and, um, sorry to bother you. Um, I mean, yes. everybody was great and sorry to bother you, but I thought he was particularly great. We should do that as a horror. We've um, been waiting. I mean, I'm not, I'm not against it. I've been, James brought it up. I mean, it was what, two years ago. 
Uh, no, three well, years ago. Wow. Okay, I mean, as far as us talking, oh, man. no, no, no. I mean, as far as us talking about it, yeah, because it was 2019. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I know that was one of the movies that we had discussed, like talking about. Um, there's just so much going on in that movie. So oh, I much. love it. It's one of my favorite, like, original movies of the last five years or so. Yeah. So, Don, um, not to break this up, but to go back to the movie for a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said before the show that you had some stuff to say about Gary. And uh, look, I just man, wanted to, to give you look, the chance to talk about Gary for a bit. I'm Gary. just going to say this. Why'd the black guy have to die? Why Gary had to be black, man? Mm, yeah. <laughs> In Mississippi, no less. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even think about that part. But Property yeah. manager. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. no. There was there was so much where I'm like my eyebrow. J- James has watched movies with me before when I'm like, <laughs> is my my racist sense going off? So my uh-huh. eyebrow will raise up and I'm like, wait a second. Hold on here. Mm-hmm. Hold on here. One, Ryan Quanton's character wouldn't be getting away with all this shit because it, it wouldn't have just been Gary showing up like. Hey man, where are your pants? You know, it would have been, <laughs> it would have been, uh, it would have been a straight call to the highway patrol. That's who would have been reporting to that site, uh, because you're not supposed to sleep overnight there. You're not supposed to camp out there, or anything like that. So at least he would have called, and been like, "Yeah, something strange is here. Get the highway patrol here like now." Mm-hmm. Um, and with it being Mississippi, the highway patrol have nothing to do on days uh, from Sunday to Friday. Uh, yeah, that aren't like college football days. Yeah, yeah. Because on Saturdays, you know, the Highway Patrol travels with the football teams, right? Uh, which is a ridiculous tradition. But anyway, <laughs> I thought it was funny that 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 got when when I I guess Gus was trying to offer up got as in exchange for him, and he was West. just like, "I'm sorry, Wes. Thank you. I don't know why I say yeah. Gus, um, but because he, I talk about Gus's chicken too much. That's yeah, why. that's probably what happened." Mm. Wow, I start talking about a black so character. Good. You bring wow, James. I bring up you know. Gus's chicken in every conversation I have. <laughs> he really does. I, I mean, know. Like, does. Yeah. Uh, but just the just the way it seemed like he was trying to offer him up, the the way that West was trying to offer up Gary for this, and Gus' response is, I you know, I have different intentions for him, or there's there's a different piece of him that I need. Mm-hmm. And I just immediately thought of like you've got a glory hole here. Like th- these jokes, like some of these, they might not even be jokes, but I'm, I'm sitting here. I'm like, I'm, st- I'm a child. I'm a child because I'm sitting here <laughs> laughing at this stuff. Like I, I had, I sent James a picture of the bread that my wife bought yesterday. <laughs> and I think I captioned it. Like I've been laughing for five minutes because she bought pumpernickel bread. And I laughed when she said she had gotten pumpernickel, but then I saw the bag and I'm like, there's no fucking way they've made this the name of the bread. They call it super pump. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they called it dark pump. And I was like, <laughs> there we go. There we go. I, I was like, what why would you I'm I'm a child. I can, you cannot show me things <laughs> like that because I will start laughing. It was like, you named the bread dark pump. Not <laughs> you know, dark pumpernickel. Like it was because mm-hmm. they they already had pumpernickel on the wrapper. Like, why did you have to give me this gift of dark pump? And so, I, being the child I am, went straight to wife, Pornhub. I and, went uh, to <laughs> yeah search. No, I asked my wife if if she really enjoyed her dark pump, and she was like, <laughs> she's like, "What is wrong with you?" I was like, you know, I hear that, you know, it's good to have a dark pump every now and then. She's like, what, oh, what is wrong with you? And then I showed her the 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 wrapper and she was like, you're a child. And I said, yes, I know I am a child. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's I, I did feel bad for him because my question that became uh, of of God and, and, and of Wes was. Was Gary actually was he actually part of the plan or not? You know, from God, because initially he keeps telling Wes, like, don't open the door, because if you open the door, he's involved and he's going to have to pay for this. Mm -hmm. And I just question if if you're talking about if predestination is a thing, Mm -hmm. then. Wouldn't that mean it was going to happen regardless? And is this an issue of 
I'm going to I'm going to fuck with Wes by yes that Gary's supposed to be here and I'm going to slaughter him. I'm going to, you know, do whatever I do to him in this in this uh stall just to get Wes's guard down even more or at least make him more fragile. Cuz you just, don't you don't have the bloodbath at that point. Yeah, I felt like Gary was just like wrong place, wrong time. That felt very much that sort of, um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there was like some subtext to it since it was in Mississippi. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to pick like, on Mississippi any chance I get. I mean, I yeah, absolutely. Here. I don't blame you. I don't blame <laughs> I'm going to do I mean, once, once the people decide to get rid of that potato and governor, uh, who's the governor right now. And I say potato because his name is Tater. Um, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not because he Every, looks like a potato. Well, he probably does look like a potato. I would imagine. Google, Google Tate Reeves. He looks like uh, a, a a Pixar character. Oh my! Um, like the uh, the the CEO from Monsters Inc. <laughs> that gets like dragged away at the end. Oh no! I mean, cool? I mean, like Mr. Potato Head. He looks like. A oh, Mr. You, oh, he character. does look like. Okay, all right. I'll, yeah, I'll have to do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. So we just okay. all call him Tater. Tater. Wow. Well, I mean, is he up for re-election this year? Uh, no. Actually, strangely enough, it's odd number year, so it'd be twenty twenty three. Oh, interesting. A nice right. picture of him with the Confederate flag. Oh, oh, you found the good one. You found the good Yay. one. Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh my. Um. <laughs> no, I, I, I got the feeling that that it's not so much up to Gary. It's, okay. What Gary does doesn't matter. It's it's solely about Wes. If Wes stops screaming, Gary just fucking leaves. I think Gary's so too. Fine. And he only comes in because Wes is screaming. And like the door might have stayed open if Wes would calm the fuck down and, you know, handle this like like a normal man without pants. And uh, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I feel bad for Gary. I don't think he had any choice in this. I don't think it was his destiny, though. I think it was completely left in Wes's hands. And and I think that that's also very symbolic of other lives that may have been lost because of Wes's right. ways. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I definitely think there's some, there's some of that in that because, um, like, it's just like he doesn't care who gets caught in, like, his orbit you know like he doesn't care what happens to any of these people you know he just wants to like be free to do what he wants to do Mm -hmm. um and since he's not he's going to lash out in like childish ways and there are going to be repercussions to those that and i'm not sure that he even really cares that much that gary gets like i mean he's probably horrified that you know all that's left of gary is like you know his leg or whatever, but um, I love when he grabs the leg and tries to hit the door. Yeah. It's so fucking great. So funny. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I just, I think it sort of like doubles down that like, he just doesn't fucking care. Like he's in it for himself. He's, tr- he's still looking for a way out. Right. And mm-hmm. like, he still thinks that like he has some sort of choice in this matter, you know, as opposed to like, um, like it, it just happens that this was sort of supposed to happen or whatever. And, um, like he's just lashing out in any way possible. And like, he doesn't care that somebody else gets like, you know, pulled in by one of the tendrils and like ripped to shreds. What difference does that make to him? He was just trying to, you know, like get out and like, he doesn't do that. He doesn't accomplish it or whatever, but like, does he, uh, there's no real, like, uh, like oh wow, what did I do to Gary? It's just like right. It's like yeah, it's fucked up that like all that's left of Gary is like a foot now. But like I don't think he cared what happened to Gary. I think it was just no, like he's... another person pulled into his orbit. It, it reminds me of the character um uh in uh Robert Pattinson's character in High. Oh fuck, what is that called? High Times, I think, is the name of the movie, where he's just like this irrepentant asshole who's just like, you know, anybody that gets pulled into his orbit just gets destroyed and he doesn't care. 
you know, and I feel like that's sort of what this character is in this movie. I, I also think that Gary's the first indication of how fucked up Wes is because not only does he not care as soon as Wes is, or as soon as Gary is inside, Wes immediately starts blaming him. He never right. takes responsibility for anything. I mean, got straight out calls him on that. Uh-huh. At one point he, uh, he says, do not attempt to look at me or yeah, of course he says that that's my other notes. He says, uh, he says that you have to stop blaming the world and, and accept what you've done, you know, mm-hmm. like, so like, like this is to me, this is very light foreshadowing of how fucked up Wes is and how he has constantly blamed everyone else for what he's done. Like right. even Brenda at the end, like it's her fault for finding this. Right. Right. Yeah, right. it's not his fault that he's a fucking terrible human being. It's, it's right. her fault. If she would have minded her own shit and stayed out of my stuff, then you know, whatever. Like, I don't know. So to me, Gary's just the beginning of that that nudge that Wes is more fucked up than we think he is. You know? Yeah. So, so basically, what you're saying is, if you're hiding documents from government agencies and they come and raid your place. Um, mm-hmm. That yeah. you should blame them for doing that as opposed to you hiding the documents in your private home. I mean, I would go far enough to say you should claim that stuff was brought in. You should like say, why <laughs> would they lay it out on the floor like that? I had it in nice boxes. You should, uh, you know, like say, well, I'm going to tell my daddy Putin on you. <laughs> I think this what is going we into about? like a. I don't know. I just, I mean, kind of the same thing, honestly. It's really not that. Different. Oh, it's not far off. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, honestly, um, giving your liver to a Cthulhu beast is probably a little less gross, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I think the main difference is that Trump would have walked into the bathroom and stuck his dick in that glory hole before it talked to him. Yeah. He'd be like, why are you not sucking my dick right now? I don't do it, Trump. So, <laughs> All right, yeah. I'll do it. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh thank you. Yeah. I'll do it. Why have you not started doing the job? Okay, I know how these things work. I'm well acquainted with them. I put my wiener oh, in, no. and you take care of whatever comes out. Okay? Ah. I'm hearing a lot of people are saying great things about this rest stop, but I'm not hearing any sucking right now. <laughs> I barely knew God. <laughs> oh my God. That I'm is, so sorry, that's, everyone. That's a really good Trump. Actually. Oh, I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you credit for that. It's, <laughs> it's a stupid skill, but it's my skill. Nonetheless, <laughs> hey. uh, you know, just own, own what you have, you know, right. I'm telling so, you, man, if I were a horrible person, I would start advertising my services to all these MAGA people to, it's like, hey, you want to prank your friend with a with Trump? Yeah, it's fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd make some money. I just want to wish you a very happy birthday. A lot of people are saying that birthdays are great things to have. I mean, I've got more birthdays than anyone else. I don't look it. I mean, I still look young. Got all my hair. I mean, I, you know what? Actually, I'd be younger than Melania. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Melania bathes in the blood of virgin <laughs> Armenian babies. Oh, wow. That sounds right what to me. What has happened to this show? Welcome <laughs> to our final episode. Um, oh, I don't think we have any MAGA listeners, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs> I'm I'm honestly not worried, you know, because yeah, right? it's Don, Don doing all this, not us. So I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> let's get on board. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Double down. Let's do it. I love it. Let's triple down then. I just want to let all of you know, if you're listening to this episode right now, oh God. God has my full permission to do impersonation. I mean, a lot of people are saying he does a great one. You know, he does a really, uh, he, he, he can eviscerate Joe Biden, okay, real easily with what he has to say. He's just, a, when, he's just a great guy. Is is Don, is Donald Trump really just Cartman? Is that what it is? <laughs> It kind of feels that way right now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We should just do an episode where Don just reads uh, Cartman lines in Trump's voice. And then we try to decide <laughs> like which ones are Cartman and which ones are Donald Trump. 
Um, Screw you guys. I'm going home. Donald Trump for sure. <laughs> that was definitely Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. When that I said for... I needed you to satisfy my physical form, this is not what I had in mind. <laughs> Well, you know, to go back to that, with that whole idea of of the term, right? Satisfy. Yes. Again, Mm -hmm. you you draw into the the sexual aspect of that as because this is even me thinking about this. And that's why I said I'm mad at them for making me think and overthink so many things. So just the just the concept of satisfaction, satisfying the 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 um, the physical physical form. form. I was yeah. going to say mortal form for some reason. Just the idea of satisfying the physical form. This, I'm sorry, James, to do this. <laughs> this then me, made me question a, a uh, animal, I'm sorry, alien genitalia again. But I guess animals. <laughs> I was going to bring tetanus. it up. That's hilarious. Because hmm. I, I then question like, well, do you mean satisfy as far as like satisfy your urge, bl- bring you to climax? Like, and I'm sitting there like, uh, even when he makes a comment of like, oh, just put your offering through the hole. <laughs> I'm thinking like, how There's is only this one gonna, piece of mm-hmm. your body that can do it? Yeah, how is yeah, this going to yeah. work? OK, so is it is really it fast. a challenge? Is it a challenge where you don't satisfy God's wishes or God's <laughs> physical form? And now you've doomed the world like this is this is also a good premise for an adult film. OK, so absolutely. I, I OK, so who cares about this film anymore i think we're <gasps> past talking Rude. about this film no no i mean no we, we love this <laughs> film we love this film we've all agreed upon that here's what here's what i really want to get down to because i think this is really the unspoken question of this film and it doesn't get answered and i feel that's a little unsatisfying mm-hmm. for your physical form for my physical form would an elder god give a good blowjob? I mean, I feel like Cthulhu with all of the tendrils and the, you know, feels like that probably would be, I, th- I feel like he would really give it the effort. You know, that's, that's all I'm saying. So I, I think Nyarlathep would do it just to, just to fuck with people. He'd just, it would just really win you over and then he'd ruin your life. Yeah. <laughs> but you know i mean a lot like my ex oh anyway um so oh whew, got dark there for a second <laughs> dark pump <laughs> I, oh my god <clears throat> oh my oh my <laughs> uh yeah so <laughs> no um i actually have a question for you guys because yeah this is this is my feeling on it. I think God is fucking with him the whole time. I think God knows he's going to make this this puny little human stick his unimpressive penis into the hole. I think that's mm-hmm. the entire plan. I think I mean it's still to get to the liver and stuff, but I think he's <laughs> just bored out of his fucking mind. And and I also think that the greatness of the line, where is it at? Here it is. You thought your human penis was going to save the universe? <laughs> your genitals, your genitals are of no significance. I was like, that is an amazing fucking scene. But but I also it sums up humanity. Like yeah. like we all are you know like like women talk about their great tits, guys talk about oh our huge cocks that definitely aren't huge except Don and uh, so I've right. heard, so I've heard. <laughs> but uh, no, um, you know, like it's just such a human thing and it would mean nothing to this God. So just fucking with you like this is hilarious to me because he's got nowhere to go. It's not really adding much time to what he's really doing. Why not That's get true. a good laugh out of it? That's true. <laughs> and fuck this guy. You know, he already knows this guy's a piece of shit. So. Mm-hmm. Why not fuck with him a little bit? I like that. I like that theory. I, you know what? The next time I watch it, I'm going to watch it with that in the back of my mind. And I'm going to be like, he's, good. he's just setting him up for 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Fuck this guy. That's right. 
That's right. So I, That's right. I read an interview that in the original script, that was what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to stick your dick in and that it got changed while making this. And I think it is so much stronger this way. I think it oh, hits yeah. harder. It's hilarious. Like we spend this whole movie waiting for him to fuck it. We all know it has to happen. Right. I, I don't think it would be as great if that's what had to happen. The, the fucking twist, if you will, of what is wrong with you? You know, it's so <laughs> great. It's just fucking beautiful. And whoever made that change, you did a great job. I'm sure it was McKendry. Probably. <laughs> which which, which McKendry? Who knows? But I, th- I um, think it's I do. Yeah, probably. This is a smart um, move. Well, you know, I sort of like um measure that to akin to there's been a lot of people that have been arguing that the new Hellraiser, which I love, I think is amazing. Um, one of the best Thank movies you. of the year. Um, but they've been arguing it's not like kinky enough. And I'm just like, well, you know, there's more, you know, about obsession and suffering and, you know, than just like BDSM, you know, right. like, there's other things that you can sort of explore with that. And I, I appreciated the the fact that they sort of explored this very adult, um, uh, sort of, uh, look at like addiction and, you know, I, I love that whole thing. And it, there's the, all of the, the gender stuff, um, mm-hmm. that I think is really well done in this one. Um, so I, I just like the fact that, um, it's, it, it's getting weird out there. I like that. It's getting weird out there. 100%. Well, and, 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 and to piggyback, Oh God, I'm trying not to say that anymore to, to anyway, to piggyback off of what Brian is saying. If you stop a, saying it, it's really going to ruin the Necronomicon bingo sheets that include what, things piggyback? like good Lord, uh, semi-racist joke. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Welcome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alien genitalia is the free button. Oh, it really like, fast. Oh, go ahead. I Brian. would like, I would like to be one of the, the spots. I don't have to be like, you know, I I'll be like an I or an N or something like that. That's <laughs> fine. But. Uh, really fast for anyone who has not heard our splice episode. Uh, we had a very long conversation with our friend, Thomas Brungart, who should be the free space on our bingo card because he's done like 50 fucking episodes. Thanks to the (laughs) Simpsons. Uh, But uh, he just, he had this very long rant about why does alien genitalia always line up with human genitalia? Good question. And it was just fantastic. We have merch on our Teespring that has the alien genitalia question. You should buy some. God, I forgot uh, about that. (laughs) (laughs) We, we also have a shirt that says, not the chains cosmic leather daddy from when Haley Piper was on yes. our Hellraiser episode. So, oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I like that. But yeah. I, I just uh, want to think. Uh, I, I feel like I have to have her on my podcast now. Absolutely. Yes, you do. Yeah, but no, I just, I just wanted to explain to people what the alien genitalia reference was because, yeah, it came up a lot in this episode. <laughs> See what I did there? Yes, I, I, I unfortunately Ba-doom. certainly didn't suck. Oh, wow! It's a it's a glory hole joke, everybody. I have another joke, but I'll swallow it. Oh, wow! All right, so you know what? Now I don't <laughs> feel so bad about making the stupid uh, Dorian Gray <laughs> joke anymore. After all this, I shit. loved your Dorian Gray joke. I was mad that I didn't come up with it. That's why I put what I put as. Oh, as okay, as fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Should I tell the Dorian J? Uh, please Dorian go, Gray please. Joke? Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, I remembered an old Dorian Gray joke, but it hasn't aged well. There you go. <laughs> that's it. That's the whole joke right there. <laughs> it's like yeah. a joke that's just specifically written for my entertainment right there. <laughs> right? I know. It's just like, there's going to be like seven people that are going to find this funny, but I'm one of them and I fucking think it's hilarious. So, <laughs> Don, do you have anything left in your notes before we move mm. forward? No, no, nothing substantial. I mean, we can go straight to movie Rex. All right, cool. So this is the part of the show where we tell you movies you should watch if you liked this movie. And uh, Brian, you can go first. 
Yeah, all right. So, um, why don't I recommend the new Hellraiser? Because it's fucking amazing, and I already talked about it. Um, and uh, I think it's absolutely great. Um, a movie that maybe is a little bit less well known um, that I would uh, really highly recommend to people, and I think it's finally getting a little bit of traction is The Stylist. Um, it's oh, yeah. on Arrow. Yeah, it's on great. Shutter. It's uh, I've had Jill Givagergazian on the uh, podcast before. I think I said that name right. Uh, to, please don't kill me, Jill. Jill Six. Uh, I've had on the uh, podcast several times, um, and uh, I was super impressed with um, just like her. I mean, that's a first time director. Anytime that I see a first time director that's like that confident, um, I just think it's great. Um, and then, I mean, it's like, um, you know, October when we're doing this and I think there's just lots of like fun stuff. Um, I, I want to recommend, uh, under wraps that was on uh, Disney plus you, you both have like kids, so you might've watched mm-hmm. this movie, but I, I think that's super fun. Um, I try not to spend time with my kids. Yeah, I know that's fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> And um, I only say that because they'll never listen to this, so it's fine. <laughs> and um, Werewolf by Night on uh, Disney Plus is fucking amazing if you haven't watched it. Um, like, it's a total throwback to like uh, Universal Monsters um, with some fun of like the Marvel uh, universe to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really uh, enjoyed that quite a bit. Uh, let's see what else. Um, oh, and. Um, Bring it on, cure or die is actually kind of fun. I was not like expecting to like uh, like that, but um, I quite sort of enjoyed that movie. So, what connection does that have to the film that we're talking about? Um, I would <laughs> say that it has a connection to the film that we're talking about because it was also <laughs> directed by a woman. So, I'm, I'm just grasping at straws. It was also <laughs> written by Rebecca McKendry. Oh God, Jesus Christ. Fuck. I, yes, exactly. <laughs> it's so funny because I actually reached out to Becca. I'm like, Hey, I'm going to talk to uh, Karen lamb, the director of uh, bring it on sure die. Um, and I was like, first of all, do you want to like stir up any, some, some shit, you know, like, do you want to be like, Oh fuck her? You know, like that was my movie. And like, it's, and she's like, no, uh, Karen's a really nice person, and uh, I'm really glad that she got the opportunity. I'm like, oh, god damn it, you're not going to sell any fucking inquirers that way, Becca. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? <laughs> um, so she was actually super um, like uh, jealous that I had seen the movie that she wrote before she watched it. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, no. why, why, why don't you reach out to so and so over it? NBC Universal. I'm sure they can get you a screener for that. Oh shit, that was a fun. That was a co- that was a fun conversation to have. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So my double feature, because that's all yeah. I ever do. Because you know Don's got to tell us 87 movies. Um, my double feature that I think would go amazing with this is Psycho Gorman. I think these two oh, would yeah. be so much fucking fun together. Absolutely. And I would love to see both on the big screen, preferably back to back like that. I, I think that'd be just fucking great. Uh, you can have a glory hole and you can, uh, you know, find out if you're attracted to hunky boys. So what a good yeah, combination. I, I actually there. So I have this, you know, I've been um, Shelly is sort of like. Not exactly Shelly, your podcast partner, my yes. podcast partner. Yes. Um, is, everybody here knows her, but you know, um, the people sure, at yeah. home probably don't. Um, she's not as, um, down with the live events as, uh, she used to be. And so I'm sort of looking for like new things. And one of my ideas was like, things you missed during the pandemic. And I was like, you know, psycho Gorman would fit in that, mm-hmm. um, dinner in America would fit in that. Oh, if you haven't watched dinner in America, that please. It's not a horror movie, but it's on Hulu right now. Go watch it right now. Like, stop this fucking podcast right goddamn now before even Don gives his, you know, uh, recommendations. I'm sorry, Don. <laughs> They're going to have to come back and listen to your recommendations. That's later. okay. They'll, they'll watch the they movie watch. And, I, and I'll still be uh, about five more movies to go. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, and uh, Dinner America, it's the best thing I've seen in 
I don't know, two or three. It would have been my number one movie in 2020. It would have been my number one movie in 2021. It is my number one movie in 2022. Now that it's finally got distribution, please go watch that movie. It is fucking amazing. Sorry, Excellent. please. Yeah, please, Don. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, no. It's no problem. Yeah. I was very say, used to it with me. Yeah. Start this off. Um, just if you want to see Ryan Quanton and Aliens again, uh, there's an episode of Creep Show called The Right Stuff, uh, where he, he was a little bit of Cthulhu uh, bleed over in that one. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other movies I would have that would go along with this one, Saw, uh, okay. Satanic Panic, Malignant, Dead Silence. I think Ryan Quanton's in that one also. Um, the Hitcher with the original one um, with C. Thomas Howell. Yeah, um, and uh, Rucker Howard. Yes. Uh, Color Out of Space, The mm. Void, In the Mouth of Madness, and last but not least, the classic, Holes. Yes, of course, Holes. <laughs> I can't believe exactly. you really went there. I was... I know you joked about it before the episode. But I was sitting here the whole time going holes, holes after everything you said. And then, then you really went there. Fantastic. <laughs> um, you remind me of another one, uh, event horizon. If you haven't. Watched oh that yes. One. Yes. That's a really oh, yeah. good one. We got an episode and on that. Sort of, yeah. I figured you probably had done it. Cause like, it's such a good movie, but um, sort of reminds me of this a little bit in terms of like, just like, um, or uh, in the mouth of madness is another one. Did mm-hmm. you, Mentioned that one already? Yeah. Yes. Like, you did. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That one's great. Love that one. Do you read Sutter Kane? <laughs> <laughs> great movie. Absolutely. Not All have right, you ever, man. do you? Present tense. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. You can't not <laughs> be reading it. All right, Brian. That brings it back to you, man. Tell everybody where they can follow your podcast and where they can find you online or. Stock yeah, you down at a bar and what kind of drink to buy you and the right way to rub um, your hair or whatever else you want. Ooh, those are all good questions. So like, um, you know, with the grain, I think is how you rub my hair. And then, um, <laughs> like as far as what I like to drink, um, Moscow mules are really good. So, um, next time you see me at a convention, you can buy me one of those. Um, you can, uh, find me at, BS movies podcast on uh, the Twitter. Um, I mean, I'm on the Facebook as well, but I mean, that's like old people stuff. So, um, and uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll maybe try and dip my toe in uh, the, uh, the TikTok soon, you know, and like um, just show what an old man I am. That's, that's gotta be fun, right. To show what an old person you are on TikTok. I mean, the kids probably like that, right? Well, I don't there know. Are a lot of people there, doing it. They? Yeah, exactly. Right. It. I was going to say, Don, you like TikTok, so <laughs> you can probably tell me better than anybody. And you're you're an old guy doing it, so I mean, you know, I can't believe I, somebody did a joke that I should have done. That's great. I, I have that. no idea what I'm doing there, but <laughs> hey, you're do, uh, you're doing more than me. So I mean, that's that's amazing. So yeah. All right. I guess that wraps it up for another week. Uh, so as always, I am James Sabata, and I'm Don Guillory. And we will see you next week here at the Necronama.com or at a rest area near you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>